how were legends made? Where do they come from? Are they born like the rest of us? Or are they created from something else? The greatest goal scorer in National Hockey League history is Wayne Gretzky. By historic feats, by unparalleled success. The Montreal Canadiens have won the Stanley Cup. By creating lasting impacts on not only those who witness their achievements, but the stories those witnesses share with others. Hello, Canada, and hockey fans in the United States. Listen to this crowd. The Hockey Hall of Fame celebrates those people, the ones who made history. Who have created stories that will be shared until the end of time. There are legends among us, and they live here at the Hockey Hall of Fame. The Hockey Hall of Fame Class of 2019 celebrates six more legendary careers. An architect that built multiple Stanley Cup winning teams. A smooth skating defenseman who led teams to Stanley Cup championships. A coach who for 50 years has helped define the stars of tomorrow. The first European star to make his way to North America, thus paving the way for countless others. A three-time Stanley Cup champion whose play at both ends of the ice made him one of the game's best. And a record-setting forward who changed the women's game. All of these people have earned the right to call themselves members of the Hockey Hall of Fame Class of 2019. From the Hockey Hall of Fame and the Alan Lambert Galleria, TSN presents the 2019 Hockey Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Please welcome your host for this evening, James Duffy. Thank you, and welcome to this historic night for hockey, the Hockey Hall of Fame induction ceremony. To everyone here tonight, and to our viewers on TSN and on the NHL Network in the United States, we thank you for joining us in what is indeed a house of legends. You can't help but feel a sense of excitement when you come into this building or to be captivated by the grandeur that it exudes. Each and every one of us has our favorite hockey legends that we can't wait to pay our own ritual of respect and thanks to when we visit this shrine that has reset the bar for Sports Hall of Fames. And tonight we add six more individuals, six more careers that are the stuff of legend that many will pay pilgrimage to in years to come. It is always an honor to host this evening as we gather to honor an outstanding induction class. Guy Carboneau, Václav Nedimansky, Jim Rutherford, Haley Wickenheiser, Jerry York, and Sergei Zuboff. Each of you has thrilled hockey fans, enriched our great game, and have provided storylines and highlight reel material that my colleagues and I in sports media have feasted on for years. We thank you and congratulations to all of you. Now to get things started, please welcome me in joining a Hall of Fame inductee who were in legendary status as one of the most beloved players to wear the Toronto Maple Leafs and Calgary Flames jerseys, and a man who has deepened his hockey legacy through his tireless work as the Hall's chairman, Mr. Lanny McDonald. Uh, good evening, and thank you very much, James. Another year has flown by, and the excitement builds as much anticipated historic night for hockey begins to unfold. It's my pleasure to be here and on behalf of the Hockey Hall of Fame, welcome to all of our guests in the audience and all of our fans watching at home. To our six inductees and their families, I share my most sincere congratulations and a hope that you enjoy this special moment, this special evening, 
as we celebrate your amazing Hall of Fame worthy careers. Jerry, 1,070 wins and counting, and this unbelievable career, the winningest college coach of all time, Taylor, McPhee, Goudreau, Patterson, Boyle, and Blake, just to name a few, well deserved. The two builders of this year's class, Jim Rutherford and Jerry York, are champions in every sense of the word. Jerry not only built title-winning teams, he molded generations of young hockey players into adults. There has been a long, unresolved debate within the hockey world over which style of coaching proves most effective. One sure thing is that coaching in today's game is not an exact science. In the case of our next inductee in the builders category, there is hard data that supports this coach's signature style, characterized by patience, positivity, and a teaching first approach. That data is highlighted by the fact that he has the most wins of any NCAA coach, that he's tied for the second most NCAA championships. But most importantly, it is supported by his undying love for the game and the glowing praise he's received from so many young athletes that he's shaped into better players and even better young men. The debates over coaching styles will go on, but the body of evidence surrounding Jerry York's storied coaching career provides a conclusive case close result his induction into the Hockey Hall of Fame tonight. For nearly 50 years, few people in NCAA hockey have exemplified success as much as Jerry York. He has taken programs to the top of the Hockey Mountain, all while maintaining a kindness, integrity, and enthusiasm that sticks with anyone who comes in contact with him. I think you gotta stay even keel and if you don't like what you're doing, get another job. York got his start in coaching for the Clarkson Golden Knights in 1972, becoming the youngest head coach in the nation at the age of 26. In 1979, he took over the reins at Bowling Green, leading the Falcons to the 1984 NCAA championship. In 1994, he returned to his alma mater, Boston College, where he had played from 1963 to 67. York ushered in a new era, winning three conference titles in his first seven seasons, while also taking the team to two national finals. The Eagles had not won an NCAA title since 1949, but all that changed with a 3-2 victory in the 2001 Frozen Four Finals. Under York, Boston College has become one of the most successful programs in NCAA hockey. In his 25 seasons at BC, York has won nine Hockey East regular season titles, nine Hockey East tournament crowns, nine Beanpot titles, and made 12 NCAA Frozen Four berths, winning four championships. He is one of only three coaches in NCAA history to lead two different schools to national titles. In December 2012, York became the all-time winningest coach in NCAA hockey history. Congratulations, guys, and uh, honored to coach, and let's keep getting better about it. You know, right? Through positivity and an unwavering faith in his players, York has built a foundation that allows his players to succeed at whatever they do. And it is because of this success that Jerry York becomes a welcome member of the Hockey Hall of Fame in the Builder category. To present Jerry York's plaque, 2009 Hall of Fame inductee, Lou Lamarillo.
Parting words from Lewis. You got to go speak now, Jerry. All right, Lou, I will. Uh, you know, one of the advantages I think of, and I didn't realize it until I came to the Toronto to accept this award, is that you make some really new friends very quickly. And I'd like to reach out to, to Ned and uh, Haley and Sergey, uh, Guy, Jim, and, and tell you how pleased I am to uh, not only be in the class with you, but I made some new friends here. And uh, it's interesting, Jimmy's son and uh, my grandson uh, I coached with an 11-year-old group, the Arctic Foxes in Pittsburgh, and so uh, good to see James here and my grandson Brendan, uh, Colin, They're pretty good friends there. Uh, you know, I'd like to uh, first just, you know, Father Penner is our, our chaplain at Boston College, and he's a, he's a terrific uh, priest and an inspiration to all of us, and he's always talking to our players about Probably the biggest problem in today's society is a lack of gratitude. People just aren't grateful anymore. You know, and it has them stand up and talk about, you know, what, what are you grateful for? You know, and the, and the player will have to start thinking about, hey, my dad started me in hockey. Or, uh, but they really, they become, hey, I've got to be grateful. And I don't only want to thank the, the section committee of the Hall of Fame, but really tell you how sincerely grateful I am to have an honor like this uh, something I've never dreamed of, uh, but to come here to the, the sacred hall here and uh, be acknowledged as uh, in the Hockey Hall of Fame, it's, uh, it's, it's just terrific. And I saw you a, a quick picture with you, Wayne Gretzky and myself on the golf course. Uh, and I kept on asking for tips from Wayne, and he just said, just swing hard, Jerry, and, and out of bounds all the time. But it was great to be with Wayne at that time. Uh, I want to take this special opportunity again to thank my wife, Bobby, uh, 49 years and counting. I think it's going to last. <laughs> uh, but again, uh, she's been uh, the general manager of, for, you know, from Potsdam to Bowling Green to Boston College. Uh, it's been just great to have you with me. And my daughter, Laura, is here, and my son, Brendan, and his uh, lovely wife, Lacey. Uh, so um, it's great to share things with people, and I like that an awful lot. Uh, I'm also very pleased that we have uh, 12 of my former assistants here tonight. And, uh, you know, I've always, people have asked me, well, what's your greatest attribute as a coach? You know, is it X's and O's? Is it this? It's just picking the right people to be an assistant coach. And I know Jimmy knows that, talking about Sully and some of the scouts he's hired over the years. But uh, I've had a great string of success uh, with my assistant coaches. Uh, uh, three in particular, uh, my very first, uh, Hi, it was Bill O'Flaherty up at Clarkson. Uh, and we, we really, I was 26 years old. I almost feel sorry for some of the players. I was just cutting my teeth there at Clarkson and uh, had to learn from that. But then uh, Mike Cavanaugh is now the coach at the University of Connecticut. He put up with me for 18, 19 years and uh, all my quirks. Uh, and then uh, Greg Brown, who was with me for 14 or 15 years. And I'm a diehard Bruins fan growing up in Boston. But, you know, he's with the Rangers now as assistant coach, and I kind of got to root for the Rangers a little bit uh, in all games without playing Boston. Uh, you know, how does this all start? How does this journey start? Everybody's different. I, I could have been, I was thinking I was going to be a, you know, a teacher, a lawyer, whatever. And, but I got a call from Harry Sinden when I just graduated from BC. And, you know, I had a pretty good career at BC. And, and Harry said, uh, you know, we have an opening spot up at Oklahoma City. We have a training camp in September. You know, we'd love to have you come up to, to try out for our team. Uh, and I said, geez, this is my chance. I trained hard all summer, and I'm going to be a pro. And uh, I get up there, and after four days of double session, I remember uh, Murray Davidson was the coach. And we were just outside of London, Ontario. The, the big club was in London. Uh, we were in St. Mary's. And you know, Wayne Cashman, uh, Ace Bailey, God rest his soul, uh, there were my line mates there for a couple of days, and after about four days, it says, you know, this isn't going to work. I'm nowhere near this talent here. And it reminds me a little bit now of that PGA when the, the tagline is, hey, these guys are good. And, and when I got there, I said, hey, this is, so that kind of, I'm not going to play in the NHL. Uh, so if I like coaching, I got to either be a ref. And, you know, Bill McCreary, uh, I was talking to him yesterday, I didn't want any part of that. So I said, well, I'll go into coaching. And, I uh, got a chance to go to Clarkson and, you know, I don't think it's buildings, I don't think it's 
campuses, and I don't think it's uh, where you are, it's the people that you are involved with that make a place special. And our first recruit was from the uh, Levac area of Northern Ontario, Dave Taylor, and I remember going up to uh, visit with his family, and uh, the dad worked in the nickel mines, and we had to wait until he had a late shift, and when he came back, he was covered with suit and everything, and he says, uh, we sat down at the kitchen table, and he says, hey, Jerry, I want my boy to get an education. He's not going to come to the work in the nickel mines with me, and, uh, you know, that was, when I think of Clarkson, I think of Dave Taylor and the Triple Crown line, and uh, Bowling Green are similar, you know, uh, I walk in on a campus there and I got Brian McClellan and George McPhee waiting. They just finished their freshman year there and uh, they stayed, which I liked. And uh, I think of Rob Blake, uh, you know, Hall of Famer, and uh, you know, the, the, just the people that I, that I had a chance to coach there. And at Boston College, where I, you know, and I spent seven years at Clarkson, 15 years at Bowling Green, and, and I'm just in my 26th year at BC. But it's, you know, I think of Brian Gionta, I think of Johnny Goodrow, and. You know, so I just love coaching. But I, I love the, the people we coach. We're not coaching pucks, and we're not coaching, uh, you know, against uh, this person. That we're, we're coaching people, and I've had some great experiences with them. Uh, you know, we all need mentors. And you know, when I was coaching, I always looked for the help for different people. And three Hall of Famers really, I think, influenced my career. First was Herb Brooks. Uh, he asked me to come out to. Colorado Springs in the summer of 1980 to help select a U.S. Olympic team for 80, and I just loved his his uh, passion, his emotion, and uh, you know. Then uh, Bob Johnson was was someone that I, I really talked a lot to about positivity and coaching and loving coaching, and I got to know him because I had a son was my grad assistant, and I remember we won the national championship when Peter came. Uh, and Bob called right afterwards and says, Jerry, what's the best thing you just did? Well, I says, we're, we're going to go, we're going to go pray downtown Bowling Green. or maybe go to the White House. He says, no, no, Jerry. You got to sit down and think, hey, how'd you win it? You know, look at your, your intangibles. How, you know, what type of play did you recruit? Your, what was your physical size and strength? What was your, your hockey sense? How did you mold that team? And that'll be a blueprint and, and do it now so that'll, I guarantee that'll help you win other national championships. And uh, it certainly was uh, uh, terrific advice from Bob. Uh, then Lou Lamorello, uh, you know, it's always been a, I almost had to work for Lou. You know, I haven't been fired all these years, which is great. And maybe that's the decision not to go to Providence with Lou. I, maybe I've kept my uh, intact, not getting fired. But uh, Lou and I uh, really loved each other as, as people and, and player uh, and coaches. And, I'd gone against him at Providence when he was coaching the Friars, and I just loved his details, attention to different things, and uh, so I think those three Hall of Famers were kind of my mentors going through. Uh, I also had a Jesuit, Father Joe Shea, that I had eight years of, for, I was Jesuit high school, Jesuit college, and I remember him telling me about, you know, just as a young puppy, Jerry, our motto is uh, men and women for others, and you've got to look at helping other people, sharing it's not all about Jerry York, and you know, it's, it kind of gets drummed into me, and I think uh, I want to thank Father Joe Shea for doing that. My wife's counting the clock, you got six minutes. Uh, college coaches, you know, and I really had some uh, great experiences and, and great uh, challenges. Uh, when I was out west, it was always Ronnie Mason at Michigan State. It was Red Berenson at, at Michigan. And you know we'd go at each other, and we all had good teams. And I, I learned from those coaches. Uh, coming back east, uh, uh, Dickie Umilly at New Hampshire was—he uh, was a guy that I had to go head to head with, and uh, very innovative, very, uh, very uh, competitive with me. But the guy uh, was Jack Parker. You know, we had 19 years. Uh, I coached against him for 40 years at different schools, Clarkson, Bowling Green. But once I get to BC and BU, it's it's like, I was talking to Jimmy, it was like the old uh, original six. It was Detroit and Toronto. It was uh, Montreal and Boston. Well, this was BC, BU, and college. And it was like those rivalries. And, you know, that brought the best out of both of us. And you've got to have rivals, guys. Uh, you know, wherever you are, it's, it's got to be, you need one team or one uh, company to really push you. And I thought with Jack and myself, it was, they probably have to 19 years, 40 years, it was dead even. So. Uh, and he was a terrific competitor for us. Uh, 
I'd like to just really talk about the state of our game. I think we're, we're right now, hockey I'm talking about, uh, we're at the gold medal standards. We've done an incredible job looking at it. It starts up top. You know, you look at the NHL and uh, the job that uh, Gary Bettman and Bill Daly have done with leadership and character and, and pushing everybody in the right direction. Uh, and then, of course, it comes down to uh, USA Hockey. You know, and Timmy Kelleher, uh, a neighbor of mine, actually grew up in Belmont, not quite Watertown, but uh, close enough. And he's leading USA Hockey to, you know, really newer heights. And I think Tom Rennie with Hockey Canada is uh, an old, old friend of mine. And I think uh, those two organizations drive youth hockey and, and uh, amateur hockey, and uh, they're doing a great job with their guidance. I think in the college game, we have six commissioners, and they are leading, you know, driving forces just like Tom and Gary and uh, Pat Kelleher are. Uh, but I think uh, we're in, in great shape. Uh, uh, you know, in Hockey East, we have, I think, the best of them both. We have Joe Batania, our commissioner, Dan Shack, he's the head of officials that spent a lot of years in the NHL. Uh, so that's where I think we're heading. We're in a great spot. You know, Lanny sent me a note the other day when I was leaving. He said, uh, I have to read it to you. And uh, I, I owe this guy because it was late night with Jimmy Kimmel, but it was late night with. Lanny McDonald last night, I was sound asleep, he came in with the Stanley Cup, put it right in my bed, and I woke up to the Stanley Cup. And I had a long travel day, I was tired, Lanny. But Lanny says, hey, welcome to the hall. It's a great team. Yes, indeed, Lanny, it's a great team. Thank you very much.